1,256 years ago, a prophet was born, and his name was Isaiah. His name in the Hebrew actually means God saves or God is salvation. And he wrote a book that bears his name. And I want us to look today at a promise recorded in the book of Isaiah. That's a huge part of what it means that God saves or God is my salvation. You know, salvation is more than just everlasting life. It's more than going to heaven. It includes hope and joy and forgiveness and adoption and a friend who sticks closer than a brother. But it also includes peace. And Isaiah, whose name means God saves or God is salvation, says it like this. He says, you will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. Trust in the Lord forever, for in Yahweh the Lord is everlasting strength. Now, one thing I think we would all agree on is that in this crazy, fearful, precipitous, mixed up, confused culture that we are all living in today is we could all use some peace in our lives. And there are all kind of things that block, that restrict and obstruct peace in our lives. Don't look at your spouse. <laughs> Some of those we can control. Some of them are completely out of our control. I mean, I can't control inflation. I can't control the price of gasoline. Are you finding that more older guys talk to you at the pump than they used to? <laughs> I was there yesterday getting some gas, and this old guy, and, and I'm kind of an old guy, but this guy seemed older than me, and, and he was filling up his tank, and he goes, be $6 in the fall. <laughs> okay, I get it. I can't control that. I can't control unemployment, the price of gold, baby formula, hiring issues. But I would like to ask this question. Where's everybody who used to work places? Where did they go? What's up with that? I don't have control over that. Now, I, I can control how I spend my own money. I can have a budget. I can pay my bills on time. I can save. I cannot use credit for the things I can't afford. And I can honor the Lord with my tithe. I hope you do that. Those things can steal my peace if I ignore them. Also, life is full of change. And many of the changes we have no control over. Health can change. Like a blink of an eye. An accident that you, you had nothing to do with. No fault of yours. Cancer, a weird virus that sweeps the world called I don't even want to use the word. <laughs> or you can get old. That's the worst. <laughs> uh, this, this mic, I had this mic the other Sunday or so. I had it, I take it off when I'm walking around after first service. I had it down here in my uh, collar. I was walking around, someone stopped me and goes, what's that thing? In that? You don't have oxygen on, do you? <laughs> I, I didn't want to talk to the person. You know, I just go... <laughs> What is wrong with you? <laughs> yeah, you pray. <laughs> no, I'm not going to make fun of that. Uh, but health can change. But, but I can do something. I can exercise. I can eat healthy. I can get medical checkups. I can lose weight. I can brush my teeth. And on and on and on we can go about certain things we can control. See, Scripture doesn't say you will keep him in perfect peace whose circumstances never change. Circumstances always change, and problems are constant. It's not absence of change that, that 
I found the secret to peace, our life without problems. You know, it's not like we come up with this, okay, I got it figured out. I'm going to live on a deserted tropical island, beautiful weather, perfect surf, grow my own food. You know, I'll be like that guy who got stranded on an island and he, he built some huts and he, he grew his own food and he was there for a long time, about years, and he finally got rescued and they, 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 they pulled up on the beach and there he was, kind of like Tom Hanks and Castaway. And as he's being rescued, one of the guys goes, what, 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 what's the three huts? He goes, oh, well, that one there is my house. He goes, well, what's that one in the middle? He goes, that's my church. He goes, well, what's that one? He goes, that's the church I used to go to. <laughs> even, even problems with the church. <laughs> He's the only guy there. <laughs> See, if our lives were free from change, from stress, from unwanted circumstances, and we had all the money we could ever desire to spend, we probably would still not possess perfect peace. Jesus said it this way in Matthew chapter 15, and I think this is apropos. He says, for out of the heart proceed evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornication, thefts, false witness, blasphemies. These are the things which defile us, which steal our peace. It's not so much what's out here, although that contributes to it, but I would submit to you that even based on our passage of Scripture today, that most of what robs our peace comes from within, from our hearts, from our minds. It's, it's, it's internal. It's in both of these, the mind and the heart. It's not so much external. If we could remove all the external issues and, and the, the things that trouble us, we would still get ourselves stressed out by what goes on on the inside. We worry about the things we have, the things we don't have, what might happen, what could happen, what should happen, what will happen, what almost happened. And Isaiah says, you will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. Trust in the Lord forever. For in Yahweh the Lord is everlasting strength. The, the word peace here in the Hebrew really can be translated to peace, peace. It, it's, the, it's the picture or concept, if you can get your head around that, the fullness of peace. It's not an adjective, it's a noun. It's, it's a word that, that talks about you'll have it full and it'll be sufficient, it'll be whole, it'll be complete. That kind of peace whose mind is stayed on thee. Now, now let me have your attention. When he, when he says your mind, it's not like talking about your brain. It's a very interesting word. It means to form. It means to frame. It means to construct uh, uh, with purpose and plan we might say it like this, a person who has a strong purpose or disposition, a driving purpose positioned within me that is stayed, that is fixed, that is set on the Lord. And their mind is, well, because of him. And being focused on him with that kind of purpose and determination, the Lord begins to produce peace. It's not like you caused the peace. You just set your disposition. You just set your heart. You just set, you know, your, 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 your whole sort of process of life on this. Lord, I trust you. The heart and the mind, I'm sure you know this, is such a random, powerful, multi-dimensional thing. It'll drag you all over. And God knows our mind. He knows our mental capacity, the thought process, our imagination, our spirit. You, you and I were created in his image. And I believe that part of that 
image is that we ourselves are creative and we're imaginative. I mean, we have 13 grandkids and just talking to them and their imagination is amazing sometimes. Like I remember one time we had a little piper who was super small over at our house and she had this thing she was doing for a while. She would get an object and she would just carry that object around all day long. It could be a ball, it could be a book, it could be a flower. But that would be her focus for that whole day. One day she was carrying around a book and I asked her, I said, Piper, what's that book? She looked up at me and said, oh, it's the Bible. It, it wasn't the Bible, it was just a book and it was upside down. I said, what does it say? And she opened it upside down. She said, it says I can have candy. I said, the Bible says you can have candy? She goes, yeah, it's right here. And I well, we better get you some candy. But I thought that's a pretty creative imagination. And, and you and I have this, this imagination, this capacity, this thought process. Our, our spirit is created that way, I believe. And God is also amazingly creative. And let, let me give you some homework for the summer. Take some time this summer and just look at all the creative, imaginative power that God has. Stop and look at a flower, a fish. Come over to my house and look at 1,342 lizards. <laughs> What's up with the lizards? It's like invaded this world. I mean, the trees and go to the beach and grab a sunset and, and just, just, you know, pick up a handful of sand and all the textures, all the fragrances. You and I have also, I think, this creative imagination process. I mean, I don't think other created species have that. I don't think a cow or a horse, you know, is out in the field and a 747 flies by and the cow looks up and goes, wow, wonder where they're going. <laughs> I'd like to be a pilot. And suddenly, you know, the cow's in the Caribbean snorkeling, playing, you know, uh, in the water and, 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 and on a jet ski. But we have that capacity. We have that capacity where you can see a jet fly by and, and, and think, man, I wonder where they're going and where they're going to end up. And the problem is our, our imagination, our heart, our mind has also been impacted by sin and the fall. And Jesus talked about that. Sometimes we're, we're like a kite on a string in the midst of a storm and just the mind can go in so many different directions and get yanked around. And it can find itself heading in ungodly directions very fast. Like, like clothes in a dryer, we kind of tumble around sometimes with our thoughts and our emotions and our plans and our purpose and our disposition. And Isaiah is reminding us, this, this one whose name means salvation, that, that you set that disposition, that mind, that purpose on the Lord. And some people set themselves and give themselves to lust or pornography or seduction and imagination and stuff just tumbles over and over randomly in their mind. And some people are given to fear. You know, what if? And we better. This is going to be a bad year. COVID and masks and storing food. Some of you will remember many years ago the whole Y2K thing. I mean, as a pastor, I remember when Y2K came and had people in the congregation that were coming into my office and saying, you need to teach people how to store food. I go, I don't see anywhere in the Bible that tells me to teach people how to store food. Well, you need to teach people how to turn their swimming pools into drinking water. Because once that clock hits 2,000, everything's going to stop. How to be a good shepherd. You're not being, you know, people can borrow a lot of fear from tomorrow, from the future. The imagination can run wide. You ever been 
alone at night in the house and it's dark by yourself and you hear a noise and suddenly you're talking real loud saying, yeah, I guess I'll clean my gun now. <laughs> and you don't even own a gun. <laughs> I mean, we do it with people, right? I mean, your spouse can say something and your imagination, your mind, I know what you're really saying. And they're not really saying anything. All crazy kind of discernments and our frame of mind, our purpose of mind. Our mind with all its capacity, with all its strength, with all its power, he says, we have to keep it, we have to focus it, we have to determine to put it on the Lord. Allow God to speak peace and, and, and keeping our focus on his love and his presence instead of imagining how you are God is going to get even with people. You know, that guy that pulled out in front of you on your Highway 98. Can you imagine that? How your ex-spouse treated you. Or how that person was unfair or dishonest. How that situation didn't meet your expectations. Imagination has all this capacity. The mind does that is looking for fulfillment and, and, and dealing with unmet expect expectations all the time. And we create this utopia for ourselves sometimes that doesn't exist. Oh, if I, if I lived in Maui. Oh, if I had a house in the mountains. Oh, this would never happen if I lived in Bermuda. If I married so-and-so. When I get my dream job. But the heart will never truly be fulfilled until we get to heaven. But here on earth, Isaiah gives us some, I think, some awesome counsel. You will keep him, not I will keep him, or you, but he will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind, his disposition, his focus is stayed on you because he's trusting in you. Eye has not seen, ear has not heard, neither or never has it entered into the heart of man or his mind, if you will, what God has in store for those who love him. When we get to heaven, all those expectations will be completely fulfilled. There'll be angels and seraphim, the throne and the lion and the lamb, and peace will be, listen, peace will be completely fulfilled, fulfilled, peace, peace. Isaiah says, listen, take your mind, take your focus, form your intention, your purpose, to do this, to trust him, to trust him. Lord, Lord, I'm struggling with fear. I'm struggling with change, with health, with circumstances. But Lord, you, you promised me that you would never leave me nor forsake me, that you would work all things together in my life for that which is good. Lord, Lord I blew it. I stumbled. I fell. But you said, if I confess my sins, your word declares that you would be faithful and just to forgive me and cleanse me from all unrighteousness. And so, Lord, I'm going to focus there. You said you would remove my sin as far as east is from west. Our focus, our plan, our purpose, our disposition is the Lord, his word. Psalm 119 has all kinds of instruction about the Lord's word. I just want to read a, a brief passage to you. I think this is pretty powerful. If you read Psalm 119, it's all about how God creates certain things in your heart, in your life, through his word. Listen, listen to just these few verses 161 through 165, princes persecute me without a cause, but my heart, my mind, my disposition stands in awe of your word. I rejoice at your word as one who finds great treasure. I hate and abhor lying, but I love your law. Seven times a day, 
I praise you because of your righteous judgment. And then he says this, great peace have those who love your law and nothing causes them to stumble. Focus there. Isaiah chapter 26, verse 12. We have, have a verse that says, Lord, you will establish peace for us for you have also done all our works in us. Not necessarily outside of us, but all that you have brought into my life and into my heart and into my mind. The Lord speaking in Isaiah 48, verse 18. Oh, that you had heeded my commandments, the Lord says. If, if you would have hid my word in your heart, if you would have focused there, then your peace would have been like a river. You ever, ever had a situation where, you know, God had spoke to you through his word and you ignored it, you didn't do it. He said, oh, that you had just listened to me. Then your peace would have been like a river and your righteousness like the waves of the sea. And then the Apostle Paul, this classic verse that I think most people have memorized, says, Re rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Let your gentleness be made known to all men. The Lord is at hand. Be anxious for nothing. But in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds. And there it is again, that internal, imaginative, creative, random thing. He'll guard it, he says, through Christ Jesus. You fix your mind on him. You place your trust in him, giving thanks to him, casting all your cares on him, purposing day by day to think on him. So many in our culture today, believers and unbelievers, are stressed, are worried, are uptight. And Isaiah, I think this, this, this amazing prophet, gives us this great reminder today where he says, you will keep him in perfect peace, 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 whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. See, I would imagine in this room right now, we've got marriage issues. Huh? No, I'm not going to ask you right now. <laughs> we've got financial issues. We've got relationship issues. We've got health issues. We got parenting issues. We got people with lust issues, forgiveness issues, trust issues, fear issues. All of us in this room have got issues. <laughs> and Isaiah and God, really, through his word, is saying to you and me, And it's not like God's hanging a carrot out there. Well, here's something I wish you could obtain, but you never will. No, he's saying, look, if you'll take your mind and purpose to, to center it on me and my word and trust me instead of imagining what people think or what could happen or the worst to come or letting your heart and mind and, and you, know, you know, bounce all around due to emotions and feelings and circumstances... He says basically this, bring the Lord, listen, into the center of your life. Let him be the one that you focus on. Not the problem, not the issue, not the circumstance. Keep, keep eternity in focus and be steadfast. And you'll not have to figure out how to have peace or strive to be at rest God will do his part if you'll do your part. He says, set your heart on me. Look to me. Give me your unstable thoughts. Set them on me and trust me in my word. And if you will, he says, and I love this word and, and this passage, he will keep, keep. 
It's an ongoing, continuous thing. It's not like, well, you got it today. No, if you'll do this, I'll, I'll keep you in peace, peace. That's the word, fullness of peace. He produces in you and I what we could never do ourselves with all our striving and all our psychological tricks. He becomes active in providing what he alone can do in our lives. We can't do it. We live in a world with problems. We live in a world with pain and hurt and bitterness and sickness and wars and shooters and injustice and constant change. And people are stressed with ulcers and self-medicating themselves with legal and illegal drugs and drugs that used to be illegal and now they're legal and alcohol and imprisoned by all kinds of fears. And God says to his children in Isaiah, and I think that speaks to you and I, hey, I want to keep you in peace, peace. If you'll focus those whole imaginative, creative, mental capacities and emotional responses on me. And he will produce in you what we can never do ourselves. Imprisoned by all kinds of fears, God says, Focus on me, look to me, set your mind on me, trust on me and my word. And if you'll do your part, I'll take care of the peace you need. I'll produce it. Your mind will take you, and I'm sure you've experienced this, to a million places that lack peace. Thoughts of loneliness, thoughts of what if, thoughts of apathy, divorce, suicide. The, 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 the enemy loves to take us in all kinds of directions. He says, no, 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 no. Bring, bring yourself to me, your heart, your mind, your emotions, to the Lord, to the Father, to the good shepherd, to the healer. Trust in the Lord forever. For in Yahweh, the Lord is everlasting strength. Let go of vain imagination, anger, lust, bitterness, hurt. Put your mind, that amazing, creative, imaginative ability on him. And let him speak. Let him speak peace. God's everlasting, unchanging word says to you and I, I will keep you in perfect peace. And he's not kidding. I will keep you there. It's like a, it's an ongoing place, he says, that I'll place you. If you'll take your heart and your mind, your emotions, put them on me, trust in me, for I have everlasting strength. Did you, have you found out that you don't have everlasting strength? I used to be a, pretty fair surfer. I know it's hard to believe. But I went out surfing yesterday because there was a ground swell and offshore wind. If you know anything about surfing, those are perfect conditions, especially for the Gulf Coast. So I headed down to the cross early in the morning, had my surfboard, got out. There was over a hundred and something guys in the water already. <laughs> I looked out there, I went, gosh, this is worse than lizards in my backyard. <laughs> And they're just everywhere. So I headed down to Navarre Pier, paddled out with a friend of mine, Stan Godwin. I think he's in the back, back there, with his wife. And today's your anniversary? Stand up for a sec. 35 years, she's put up with Stan Godwin. So Stan and I paddle out. Everybody thinks Stan's my brother because we have the same hair. We baptize together all the time. And I go, no, I, that guy would never be my brother. Are you out of your mind? But anyway, so we paddle out. And I think I caught maybe two or three waves. And I thought, I'm tired. I don't have everlasting strength. When I was 18, I had everlasting strength. But God says, I have everlasting strength unchanging, an unchanging word. 
See, let him speak peace to you. You can't control anything. If you think you can control something, have a teenager. <laughs> One powerful reminder of peace, of this amazing benefit of salvation, is something I, I want us to end our message with today. And that's communion. If there was ever an amazing reminder of peace, and Jesus said, do this in remembrance of me, because not only does he give us peace with God, but he also gives us the peace of God through his body and through his blood. So listen, homework. Take time this summer to, to look at some of the amazing creative power of the Lord and, and remember that he's given you a creative mind and heart that he doesn't want you to focus on all the what ifs and could be's and should have and may be, but focus on him, his word, his promises, and use that mind to, to find yourself in the midst of allowing him because of who he is and your focus and disposition on him to do exactly what he says he will do. He will give you peace peace for he is the Lord and you trust in him and he has everlasting strength.